I started drinking. I don't really know why. It might have been a habit I picked up from college. It might have been a habit I picked up from 16. I picked up drinking, doing drugs. I mean, all of the other bad things that came with it. And I developed a terrible addiction. And my addiction was crippling. I thought I had it under control. I thought I had it wrapped up. But it wasn't until uh, after my first child that I realized how bad it was. And that's when I had the intervention. That's when on May 11th, on 2011, I was faced with a decision of whether I was going to continue my addiction and continue my habit and neglect my family or if I was going to really give it my best shot to quit. And I remember I was at Mount Trashmore and I had drink drank so much the night before I woke up in the morning and just immediately apologized to Christina and I said hey I don't really remember what I did last night but I know I should be apologizing and at that point she said that's a, that's it I can't I can't take any more and I just remember I just remember knowing that that was going to be it, that that was going to be the last opportunity I had with my family. So without even trying to fight this time, I said to her, I said, okay, I get it. Do you mind if I hang with the boys today before you take them and go to your mom's? She said, yeah. So we went to Mount Trashmore, it was about 2 p.m. And I'm just sitting there, I'm watching them play out in the playground. Jonah was still in a stroller and Noah was old enough to run around. And I remember just feeling like the biggest piece of shit on the planet. Because the one thing I have always loved are my children. That has never faded and I had a problem. And I heard about God, I had believed in God somewhat to that point but not really and so I'm sitting there on the bench watching Noah play and I just said God I didn't know where else to turn I said God I have a problem and I can't solve it I cannot obviously take care of this issue I don't know if you're real I don't know if you exist but I think you do and I need help and I need major help right this moment. I said, please help me with this situation and I will stop all of the drinking and nonsense. Like trying to barter, like as if God barters. At that time I thought, hey, what the heck, what do I got to lose? In all reality, we don't barter. God's already had this whole thing figured out to this point, but it, that took me a while to figure out as well, and grace, so, so I just remember, I just looked up, I said, God, please, I need help, I need your help, I'll do anything to fix this, and I kid you not, and I'm, my, the arm, the hairs on my arms are standing up as we speak, he said, well, he, he, what he said is, he, believe it or not, stopped time. You ever been in one of those movies where everybody's frozen except for the person and they're looking around and everybody's just... Well, that's what happened. Everybody at the park was completely frozen, not moving. And I was like, okay, am I still drunk? I'm like, nah, it's two o'clock, super hot out, sweat all that out. There's no possible way. And the next thing I know, Noah is the only one who's moving out of everybody, comes walking over to me. And at this time, Noah's about two and a half. And he's, you know, I had a lisp, real thick lisp. Um, it was hard to understand him. He came over and I kid you not, the words were so 
crisp and clear with no lisp, he looks at me right after I begged for mercy and help and says, Daddy, it's gonna be okay. I love you. And then put his arms around me and I lost it. <sighs> I lost it. And it was, it was full God. Nothing else could explain it. That moment I felt the most warmth. I felt the craziest just sensation of, of being free and forgiven. That from that moment, I never had a drop of alcohol ever again. Never. And, and some people say, well, it's genetic and it's a drinking thing. That was a God thing. That's all there was to it. It was a God thing. And I'm just thankful that he bestowed his grace upon me. And I went home and I looked at Christina and there was really nothing I could say at that point. I just walked right up to her and said, I'm sorry. And I hugged her and it's weird because instead of pushing me away and leaving, she embraced me and just hugged and we just sat there and cried and cried. And it's almost as if when she hugged me, she knew something had changed inside of me. Something was completely different. And we worked it out. And I went to meetings and she helped and supported me. And I never to this day had a drop of alcohol. And two days I'm coming up on my eight years of sobriety from that moment. And the one thing that I have learned is any plans or anything that I think that I can fix or I can solve is silly. God's already got all that worked out. Every bit of that has already been figured out and I had just have to believe that there is a reason and a purpose and just let him do what he does. That's it. I'm, I'm not going to be able to change. I can, I can stay the course and I can help the situation. But inevitably, God's got to figure it out, and I've got to get out of my own way to do it. And that's where this comes from. I just try to give back as much as I possibly can. I've got so much gratitude. I'm so thankful for the people that I work with. These houses that we do are, every time I go in one, I just think to myself, I'm so blessed to be able to do this and to do it with people I love and to help feed the families that get paid from these houses and to feed my own family. And they're great. And God and business to me are, 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 are intertwined. They're one. Some people think you can't do it. You absolutely can. It's called being a good person. Oh, you cuss. Yeah, I do. I mean, last time I checked, God's not sending me to hell because I said the F word. God knows I'm a great human being who wants to give back to others and that I care about them. That's what it is. And I love on people. And that's what this journey is about. That's what building boys is about. I finally have realized that I don't need to conform to the genres or the thoughts or the pictures or the images of all these other people. I've got to do what I've got to do the best I can do it and just love and support and have as much gratitude to everybody around me that I can. It's not about getting over on somebody. It's not about one-upping. It's not about having this or that or I've got more. I've had the big house. I've had the 4,000 square foot big beautiful house with the 500 series Mercedes. I've had it. And guess what? I got rid of it because to me, that's not what it's about. I want to do this from the dirt. I want to dig the trenches. I want to show that I don't need these things that other people think make their lives. None of that makes my lives. The people in it and God make my life. That's what it is. So I welcome you guys to follow along this journey with us. 